we're going to work together on a morphological exercise that is a little bit complex, but is very interesting. We're going to try to figure out the pattern for the allomorphs of the Turkish plural. And we'll go one step at a time. So here we have some data from Turkish, and I can tell you that Turkish has a plural suffix, and it has two allomorphs, lej and lash. Here we have some data with the lej allomorph. For example, evlej, yemeklej, shehirlej, gullej, yuzlej, denizlej. Houses, meals, cities, roses, eyes, and seas. We have some data with the lash allomorph, as in elmalaj, odalaj, halalaj, kizlaj, yollaj, chojuklaj. Apples, rooms, carpets, girls, roads, children. So sometimes we see the plural with an with an e, and sometimes we see the plural with the a. What's going on? How can we figure out wh uh, where can we expect the lash and where can we expect the lash? We're going to solve this as we would uh, phonological problems. So we're going to have two allomorphs, and we're going to try to get the environments around them. I want you to do something slightly different this time. I don't want you to just get the neighboring sounds, but I want you to go one sound over to the previous vowel. So for example, in number two, yemeklesh, the morpheme ler is preceded by a k, but that's not a vowel. You'd have to go one sound over to find a vowel. E. Um, in the first one, f, the morpheme is preceded by a v, so we have to go one sound over to find a vowel. E. In number seven, el malash, the morpheme, the allomorph, I'm sorry, is preceded by an A, so you don't have to go one sound over. We already found the vowel. So I want you to extract the environments with a consonant, if you find it, and then the preceding vowel. I want to see the vowel that comes before the lesh and the lash. Uh, please go ahead and get the environments. Please pause the video. All right. Essentially, what we're looking for is the rhyme of the last vowel of the root. For example, in Yemeklash, the last vowel is mek, and the rhyme is the nucleus and the coda, ek. We have the data here, and we need to figure out what the whether they're in complementary distribution or not. The right side is not going to help us, because both ler and lash are followed by the edge of the word. They're both suffixes, so this is to be expected. How about the left side, the edge of the root? The consonants are not going to help us either, because we can find the K for both allomorphs. For example, in yemeklej and chojuklaj, both of them have K next to the L. Likewise, with a Z, as in yuzlej and kizlaj, we find Z right next to the allomorphs. Likewise with the L in gülaj and yollaj. So the consonants are probably not going to help us. So let's look at the previous vowel. Here we might be getting somewhere. The, uh, the lej allomorph is uh, always preceded by vowels like E, I, U, and E. On the other hand, the large allomorph is preceded by vowels like a, e, o, and u. So these two are in complementary distribution. The vowels that precede large never precede large, and the vowels that precede large never precede large. So we have these here. By the way, I have a chart here of the vowels of Turkish. As you can see, they can be described by a feature like height, high, mid, low, features like frontness or backness, front, central, back, and features like roundness, E versus U. So I want you to try to figure something out. What feature do these four sounds have in common? And also, what feature do these other four sounds have in common? So what is the feature that the, the, the sounds E, I, U, and U have in common, and that A, U, O, U have in common? Please pause the video. Let me propose this to you, that the features that they have in common are these. 
A, E, U, and U are plus front. They're all in the front region of the triangle. And A, U, O, and U have in common not being front. They can be central, they can be back, they can be high, they can be low, but most importantly, none of them are in the front region. So this is not only a good way to describe these two, but also to contrast this set with this other set. These four are clearly plus front, these are minus front. This also gives us something very desirable. Plus front is also a characteristic of the vowel in this allomorph. In lish, there is an e, which is also a plus front sound. In lash, there is an a, which we can describe as a not front sound. So this is something interesting. The allomorph has to match the frontness of the vowel before it. So for example, in gulej, roses, gul, the, the u is a plus front sound. So we're going to find a plus front e in the allomorph. On the other hand, in yolaj, o is a minus front sound. So we're going to find a minus front a in the allomorph. The vowel in the allomorph has to match the frontness of the last vowel of the root, whether it's plus front or minus front. Now we're getting somewhere. I wanted to take um, an even closer look at this. So we have figured out that the vowel in the allomorph has to match the frontness setting of the vowel of the last vowel of the root. But let's look at the vowels of the morphemes themselves, e and a. What features do those two have in common? So try to find two features that are shared by e and a. Please pause the video. These two sounds are not rounded, e, a, but also neither of them is high. They're mid or low, but neither in or a are high sound. So with the features minus high and minus rounded, we can say that it's either an e or an a. And then the only difference between them is that a is plus front and a is minus front. Now we have all of the ingredients that we need to write this rule. This is what's happening. There's a morpheme for the Turkish plural, which is l, and then some sort of vowel, and then an R. This vowel has to be minus high and minus rounded, so it can be either A or A. But we don't know yet if it's minus front, I'm sorry, plus front or minus front. It's going to have a zero setting for front. It then has to go get its setting for frontness from the previous vowel. So for example, in Odalash, this a is going to be minus high, minus rounded, but it's going to have a zero frontness. And so it has to go match its frontness to the last vowel of the root, a. Because this one is minus front, so will this one be. This one is going to be minus high, minus rounded, minus front. Oda lash. So this could be the rule. The suffix for the Turkish plural has an l, an r, and then a vowel, which has to be minus high, has to be minus rounded, but we don't know what's going to be its frontness. It has zero frontness. By the way, the technical term is underspecified for frontness. So whenever we have this morpheme, we're going to have it here, and it's going to be preceded by an optional consonant that we don't really care about, and a vowel. And the vowel is going to have some setting of frontness, either plus or minus. And whatever its frontness is, the output, uh, the surface form of the morpheme is going to have to match the frontness. So what we're going to see in the word is going to have an L, an R, and a vowel that's going to be minus front, minus high, minus rounded, and the same frontness as whatever vowel preceded it. As, for example, in Shehirlesh, we have that the root the final vowel of the root is an e, which is minus front. So the allomorph has to be a minus high, minus rounded vowel 
and then it will take its frontness setting from the E. Because this one is plus front, the allomorph is also going to be plus front. Shehirlesh. That's the Turkish plural. <laughs> this pattern, by the way, is called vowel harmony. And vowel harmony is very common in the world. It have uh, you can see it in Turkish. I mean, Turkic languages. Korean has it as well. Old Japanese had uh, vowel harmony. So you're gonna find it every now and then. But the main point of the exercise is that morphemes can have allomorphs, and the allomorphs are determined by the environment. For example, if the last vowel of the root is plus front, the morpheme is gonna have a vowel that is also plus front. In the next video, we're going to look a little bit more at uh, underlying and surface forms.